You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. I have back Lynn Smith, who has a different hat this time. I do. Okay, Lynn, you work at a great agency, Old Colony Elder Services, right on Main Street that services the Greater Brockton area. Mm -hmm. Things like Meals on Wheels. There's so many programs, we can't even list them here. Right. The month of June, June is Elder Abuse Awareness Month, mm -hmm. correct? That's correct, Mark. And you, we just recorded the other day, um, there's banners hung right outside your office to mm -hmm. make people aware of it. But what happens every year in June is over at the Council on Aging in Brockton, there's March. There's, mm -hmm. uh, last year, I don't know if the church is still purple or not, but uh, uh, Pat Foley, who had worked at Old Colony Elder, and all of your staff, and then the folks at the Council on Aging, Janice Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. and everyone over there, whole bunch of us, I got in line with the group too. Mm -hmm. We all marched down Main Street over to old CES and to let people know that this is a, still a problem in this day and age. And uh, you, uh, hopefully it's not gonna get worse, but it's, it's, it's out there and, and people know about it and there's different definitions of elder abuse. Yeah, there is. And you know, it's a very difficult topic to talk about, especially if you have parents who are at that age you know, recently there was a statistic that I saw that almost 25,000 cases of elder abuse were reported to the Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs. And at Old Colony Elder Services, we're close to 2,000 cases a year that get reported to us. And about 60% of those we turn over to the district attorney's office for further investigation. Because as you stated, it's not just physical abuse, it's not just the hitting or the black and blues, but it also can be emotional abuse, it can be neglect, it can be financial abuse. Oh ma, just sign this paper and then you don't have to worry about the house anymore. It can be sexual abuse and, and it can be self-neglect. Now on that sign the paper, you don't have to worry about the house anymore people that are over 62 can reverse mortgage. Mm -hmm. So if someone signed the wrong piece of paper, mm -hmm. yeah, they're living in their house till they die, but maybe they intended it to go to their son, their daughter, or grandchild, not anymore, goes to the bank. That's right. Okay. Um, people, seniors especially now, we live in a technology world. It's not even sign the piece of paper, it's sign on the iPad mm -hmm. and you're all set, mm -hmm. okay. Um, my dad worked in law enforcement for 36 years. He never wanted to see a child abused in any way or a woman abused mm -hmm. in any way. Um, you know, at, at, at this point in age, he's 90. I was on a board in a nursing home when mm -hmm. there was a bad incident that happened to a 90-year-old. So it, it, it happens more often than anyone know it. I'm glad to hear, I, I don't want to say it's only 2,000, but when you said the 25,000 cases, that's a pretty staggering number. And I, I don't think people realize the, the ramifications, the cost, the financial, the emotional, everything that goes on. So the, the March in Brockton is the 15th. That's right? right. And so what we ask people and what we ask folks that are watching the show is, if you have a concern, if you have a concern within your family, if you have a concern with a neighbor, um, our banking system, for example, if an elder typically comes in and cashes a check for $25 and all of a sudden has someone else with them and they're withdrawing large sums of money, be aware of what might be happening. Your report to us is confidential, so our protective services team mm -hmm. will do an investigation on a confidential uh, basis. And then our job is intervention. You know, maybe sometimes there's a substance abuse problem involved. Maybe a family is overwhelmed. Maybe someone needs just some more home care services. Maybe it's medication that needs to be adjusted. Or maybe the person needs to be extracted from a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. So it can run the gamut. You know, hoarding is a, an issue of self-neglect. Someone refusing to take his or her medication might be self-neglect. We, we worry all the time about elder suicide and people not paying attention when someone says, you know, all I have to do is take all these pills and I don't have to worry anymore. 
So we don't investigate stranger abuse. We investigate someone if they're 60 or older, they reside in our service area, and they have a, a relationship with the alleged perpetrator. So it could be a family member, right. could be a caregiver, could be um, a neighbor. Because if it's a stranger situation, that's a police um, situation. So let me ask you on that note. If someone gets a call asking for your social security and bank account number, that's a scammer, okay? Would that be a police matter? That wouldn't be something. Yeah, that's right. And, and But part of protecting seniors is to make sure that they're aware, for example, through our councils on aging about scams. And you know, the Attorney General, Mara Healy, has a special 800 number that's specifically for our seniors, for elders to, to use, okay. uh, to report that. So financial abuse could be a scam or it could be um, a family member withholding your social security money or, right. or asking convert, you converting to- Converting possibly from a paper statement that most seniors would wanna see right. to an online statement that they might not have access to a computer right. or not know how to use a computer, so it could be something like that right. as well. Exactly, and you know, one of our one of the programs that we have in protective services, in many instances, if you lose a spouse, and that spouse is the one that always did the bank account and the bill paying, sure. you're kind of at a loss. So we have a money management program where volunteers in the community are trained. Mm -hmm. Volunteers are you know taught how to manage someone's budget, someone's calendar, confidentiality, and can go in once or twice a month and just help out with organizing the bills and making sure they're paid. So a lot of this is empowerment and education as well. But the march will be a little f more uh, impactful this year because we had those beautiful light poles in downtown Brockton, and we wanted to write a a protocol or a pilot program as a public service announcement to put some banners up. So we worked with Maya Carpenter and with the law department and sort of worked out the step-by-step -step of how that goes. So on those eight poles right at 144 Main Street, we have eight different banners that mm. basically say stop elder abuse. So on June 15th, we'll gather at the Brockton Council on Aging at noontime. Mm -hmm. Folks can um, call the Council on Aging to register just so that we have enough food, or they can call us at 508-584-1561, extension 220, just so that we have a head count for food. So we walk from Father Kenny Way down to our office, which is at 144 Main Street. Mm -hmm. We have a little pause, we have a little cold water, we rest our feet. And then we turn around and we go back to the Council on Aging. And then we have some speakers and some information and some programming. Okay, and I know you're doing one in Plymouth. We're not going to talk about that here because we're Brockton. Mm -hmm. But because Old Colony is a, a wider net, there's, mm -hmm. there's one in Plymouth on the 22nd. That's right. Okay. So we try to cover our territory. And, you know, we couldn't do this without our wonderful sponsors. So the Council on Aging is helping out, Harbor One, Roach Brothers, Shaw's, the Brockton Police Patrolmen's Association, the Plymouth Police Relief Association, and of course, Tim Cruz and oh the Plymouth County District Attorney. Oh. So June 15th, rain or shine, we'll see you at the Council on Aging at high noon. Perfect, thank you. Got all sorts of good stuff coming up and hopefully it'll prevent something from being bad. Absolutely. You're watching Greater Brockton, Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people and faces right here in the City of Champions.